In this video, we will be discussing the use of fractional carbon dioxide laser for the treatment of rhinophyma. When the patient is settled comfortably, the nose is prepared with antiseptic solution and local anaesthetic, which is a combination of short and long acting anaesthetic, is injected prior to the treatment. Injection begins in the glabella region, infiltrating as the needle is advanced toward the right alar base. The needle is almost completely withdrawn and then infiltration is continued toward the left alar base. Finally, the nasal ring block is completed by infiltration from the right to the left alar base, caudal to the nasal spine. Clinic doors are locked and necessary laser safety measures are undertaken, including eye protection for staff and the patient prior to the commencement of the laser treatment. The luminous carbon dioxide laser, aided by use of the plume evacuator, is then used to ablate the main bulk of the rhinophyma. This is achieved by selecting a 2mm true spot handpiece on continuous wave settings. This may start at 12 to 18 watts, dependent on the size of area to be reduced. A layer by layer technique is used. The high settings ensure vaporization of the tissue and there is no requirement to wipe away eschar. Early signs of adequate ablation include visible expression of the contents of the dilated glands, coined the gopher sign by the senior author. As the bulk is reduced, it is important to progressively lower the energy to maintain control and minimize potential of overreduction and scarring. This usually follows a pattern of 8 watts, 6 watts and 3 watts until a satisfactory endpoint is achieved. Finally, the carbon dioxide laser is changed to ultrapulse mode using a 2mm handpiece and settings of 125 to 175 joules per square centimetre, 10 to 15 hertz, so that finer shaping, feathering in and blending of treated areas into normal surrounding tissue is achieved. The patient is usually given a mirror in order to be sure the outcome of ablation is satisfactory. Intratreatment photographs may be taken at this stage. Polyfax ointment is applied to the treated area, which remains covered with a brown eschar. This eschar gradually separates over a period of approximately three weeks. Written instructions for aftercare are also given and discussed with the patient. The treatment lasts approximately one to two hours, after which the patient is discharged home. We will now present a few cases of rhinophyma which were treated with the ultrapulse carbon dioxide laser. Mr. KC is an 89-year-old gentleman who presented with a rhinophyma. The patient had complaints of obstruction of his nostrils and found the rhinophyma to be cosmetically unpleasant. The patient had no history of previous treatment for his rhinophyma. As illustrated, the patient had a moderate rhinophyma with significant proliferation of tissues over both nasal ali. The patient underwent a single carbon dioxide laser treatment using continuous wave and ultrapulse modes. The laser power was progressively reduced to precisely sculpt the aesthetic units of the nose. The photographs illustrate the appearance of the nose at two months following carbon dioxide laser treatment. The patient achieved an excellent cosmetic improvement in the shape, texture and size of the nose. Patient symptoms of nasal obstruction resolved completely and the patient was very happy with the outcome of his treatment. Case 2 is a 60-year-old gentleman with known history of rosacea. He presented with progressively enlarging rhinophyma and was self-conscious of his appearance. He had medical treatments for his rhinophyma previously. The patient had bulbous and nodular overhanging rhinophyma, primarily affecting the tip of the nose, causing obstruction of his nostril. 
there was also a relatively moderate involvement of both ali. The patient was treated with continuous wave mode of carbon dioxide laser using the settings as shown. The overhanging rhinophyme was amputated using the laser before sculpting the nasal aesthetic subunits. These photographs illustrate the immediate post-treatment appearance of the nose, demonstrating complete hemostatic control of the treated area. At two months, the treated area healed completely with no scarring. There was no residual erythema or edema. Some hyperpigmentation was noted at the treated area. However, it did not bother the patient and no further treatment was undertaken. Overall, the patient was delighted with the clinical outcome. This is an 81-year-old gentleman who presented with a one-year history of severe rhinophyma. The patient found his rhinophyma to be unsightly but never sought any treatment. Now the patient had difficulty drinking tea and felt troubled by it. As demonstrated, the patient had a large polypoid overgrowth affecting the nasal tip, which extended to the dorsum of nose superiorly and columella inferiorly. The ali were also involved bilaterally. The weight of the growth was also causing mechanical collapse of the nostrils, as demonstrated in the worm's eye view. The patient was treated with a continuous wave mode of carbon dioxide laser using the settings as shown. The overhanging rhinophyma was amputated using the laser before sculpting the nasal aesthetic subunits. At three months, the wounds were completely healed. Good nasal contour and shape was achieved with no scarring. The nostrils were patent and regained their normal posture.